All right, let's create a new program where we start taking control of the graphics on the screen in preparation for being able to control them based on user input. Create a new program called Green Ball 2, Move Green Ball 2. Make sure you have your three import statements. We're going to extend the graphics program. And we're going to start by setting up the height and width of our applet. Public static final. It's an integer. Final means it's not going to change, so it's the opposite of a variable. It's more of a constant. Application width. And we'll copy that. And set the height. So we can use these once again. We're going to use these walls to bounce the ball off. Let's create our run method. Public void run. Got our curly braces. And in here, let's set our background color. And let's create a new geoval. Be our ball in this case, and it's equal to a new G oval. And we can put its height and width in there. We're going to fill it. Set color, and as the name suggests, of this class, color.green. We're going to give it an X and Y coordinate. But rather doing that, let's uh, uh, now we'll leave that just like that. Let's compile, make sure we don't have any errors. And let's add our wait for click method so that it doesn't start operating without us. Once we have that in position, we can add our while loop. We'll just set it to the default true, add our curly braces. And we're going to go to ball.move. That's a method that's going to allow us to move the ball. That's our x, y value. So we only want it moving across. So I'm only going to change the x. Pause it a little bit. 50 milliseconds so I can see it. And let's add another an if statement in here using uh, the application height and width. So if ball dot get, we can get the y value, we can get the x value, we can set those as well. We're going to get the ball's x location. So if the ball's x location, meaning if it's moving left to right over the screen, is greater than or equal to application width, or in this case we could use 300. So when it hits the side of the of our applet, we can then do something with it. In this case, we'll have it end. We'll use the break statement. We'll end this loop, and let's test it, see if it works. Okay, that was taking a while, so I paused it. And once it got to uh, the end, we broke out of our loop, and that ended. So let's see where we can take this next. Now, if we wanted this ball to start going back to the left, we might simply do this. However, the problem is, as we continue looping, we're going to move one space to the right, one to the left. It's just going to keep going left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So that's not going to work for us. What we're going to want to do is eventually change the direction of the x value and the direction of the y value. So we may have to set those up. So let's go up here. Put the 
so it was left as one. Action y, we don't need that moving on the y value, so we'll leave that as zero. We'll compile that. Let's see what this does. Negative one. So now we can change that directional value. So let's run that. Wait for click. I'll pause it for a second. Okay, and when this ball hits the right edge, it should bomb, bounce back. So once again, we're using the get x code, the x location, in order to make that change.